So my son is a bit sort of uh, about Star Trek at the moment. Um, I haven't really succeeded in getting him into it massively. But um, he did sit through the Tin Man episode of The Next Generation with me. And in classic uh, newly teenage fashion, he um, pretended not to be watching it, but then started asking me all sorts of very pertinent questions about Tin Man, or Gomchu, as it's as he's, he's actually called um, in the episode. And it was a really good episode because it had um, the Romulans as really nasty actual antagonists in it. Um, you know, they opened up on the Enterprise D just to try and get to Gom 2 first. And they also were threatening to destroy this poor alien living starship creature just so that no one else could get their paws on him, basically. So um, they were really quite... They were proper, you know, evil adversary types in this particular episode, and we got some nice action shots of the um, the Roman warbird into the bargain as well, the Dideridex class, which is a massive favourite of mine, and I think a lot of other people's as well. And it just demonstrated how powerful that ship was in, in close quarters combat as well, because it properly hammered the Enterprise, and it wasn't even properly engaged with it, it was really just a sort of a hit and run delaying tactics that it could get to gum to first and i wasn't really sure what this model was going to look like because it, it they captured it really nicely on screen and the whole episode is a really good next generation episode so i do encourage you to to watch it if you've never seen it and um i'm just sort of feeding the model for the first time and it's it's one of the more plasticky ones but i can see why it would be because Let's face it, that's a difficult thing to mould. Um, but that is a little bit... It's a little bit disappointing in the sense that it's... Um, it looks a little bit like an Easter egg. It's got this really, very obvious seam down the down the side of it. Um, yeah, I'm not sure how else you could have done it, if I'm perfectly honest. Maybe you could have put some sort of end cap on the end there and to hold the two halves together, but... Um, I really got it to see if my son was interested in it at all. Um, I mean, it, I mean the, 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 the coloration is good. The there's a bit of a sort of a, the skin pattern is, is is on there. I just think it, it feels a little bit like a sort of random novelty paperweight. Unfortunately, it's not really their fault because he doesn't because it's a it's a living starship, which was quite unusual as a concept for for Star Trek. I think at the time, I'm trying to think if there are any other similar examples at the time and I can't really think that there were many. Um I mean Species eight four seven two had bio ships but that came a lot later of course so you know Tim Gom to had the steel on, on them there. So it's a slightly disappointing model sort of design in that sense and it's a lot lighter than Eagle Moss models often are. But you know I can see why they would struggle with it. Um at this sort of scale, in fairness to them. So, um, I mean, if you recall the episode at all, that the, the Gom Two had basically gone, been picked up by a Federation probe, and um, which is out at very long range. So the Enterprise rendezvoused with an Excelsior class ship to get a, a Beta Z first contact specialist on board. And they then legged it basically to the um, to Tin Man's location to try and make first contact. But the the Romulans were were also interested because they monitored the probe's telemetry, and they sent two warbirds. But but the Galaxy class was faster than the warbird in, at warp, and so what the Romulans did was they they sent one warbird beyond its conventional top speed, with a view to it getting there first. But it, it wrecked itself doing it basically. Um, and then the second one tailed it at a speed which would have allowed it to get back home again, presumably pick up the other crew if need be. Um, but that was that was the, basically the the story of it was that the Romans posed this threat, but the the Beta Z who was picked up to help communicate with Gom Two warned it, and it actually dealt with the Romans rather than the Enterprise. But in the process, it it dem it damaged the Enterprise even further, which of course Picard wasn't very impressed by. Um, <coughs> but that was the the basic storyline and, and it was quite a, a sort of a novel ending as 
you know, it was left very unresolved actually. So we never actually know what ended up happening to Gum Two and the um, and the Beta Z chap. So quite an interesting one, um, but a really really solid next generation an episode. And um, that's why I thought my my lad might might have might have liked it. I think he did quietly, but you know, teenager. So um, yeah, I mean. That, this has significance for me because it was probably the first episode that, that my son had sat through with me. So, you know, I kind of, I weakened and got it on that basis and the basis it was reduced. But I can't really say to you that's massively worth having unless you're a huge fan of Gum 2. Um, I mean, it's, it's nicely enough done. It's just unfortunate that the, I say the scene makes it look a bit like an Easter egg and it's just not, yeah, it's, it's not their best model. I think it's fair to say. But anyway, I shall move on to the next.